So all you teachers out there, you know what I'm talking about when I talk about students who are using a computer and just cannot stop using it when you need to move on from one project or activity to another or they're not paying attention to you. Well, I've had several students over my career that that has always been a little bit irritating and to their credit, nobody likes to be stopped in the middle of what they're doing and not be able to go on, but you do have to have their attention so that you can teach them before going on. And I've looked at many different uh, classroom management tools that allow us to keep an eye on student computers and what they're doing, but they've always been pricey, even though we've looked at different uh, programs. Anyways, I came across a free one for the first time ever. It's open source. It's called Veon. This thing is amazing and does everything I want it to do. It works on Windows and Linux, so you teachers that have Chromebooks, this video will not be for you. But this is amazing. As you can see on my monitor, I've got several students. I haven't turned on all my computers, but I've turned on many of them. And you can label the computer names, okay, uh, and so that you know whose is who. You can, you can right-click on any uh, student's computer, and you could say lock. Watch the lock icon show up. Isn't that awesome? And all of a sudden, on his computer, it is totally locked. It's fantastic. And then right-click on it and unlock. Let's say you transition from one activity to the next, and you're like, okay, three, two, one, eyes on me. And you get most of your class up there, but you got that one or two students who just cannot drop their eyes from their computer. You can actually now go three, two, one, and say lock, and we will lock all monitors at one time. And that way you can go through and really get them stopped. This is fantastic. This is fantastic. And then once you're ready to move on, you can hit unlock. Another cool thing with this is you can send a text message out to either the entire class. We'll have some fun. Get, if I could type, get to work now. Okay, and then when I hit OK, it'll actually send that to all of their screens. See it popping up? Okay, so I can send silent messages to them. Um, I could also just right-click on a student's computer and send an individual text message. Stop the chatter, right? Okay, and it'll send it to this student here. Uh, another fantastic thing is... You can actually open up a website for every single one of your students. So let's say you want to send all your kids to um, Prodigy to play the Prodigy math game. If you haven't ever had your students play that, K6, you really should. That's a fantastic game. But uh, we're going to type in prodigygame.com. And I'm going to say remember and call this Prodigy and then click OK and watch what happens. It'll start pulling up Prodigy Game for them. Isn't that awesome? It's fantastic. I can't believe how easy that is. Or if a kid is stuck, you can right click on any um, monitor and you can open a website for, go to my personal website, thirdgrade.xyz, put a plug in for it. Um, and it opened up my personal website right for um, this student here. This is phenomenal. I absolutely love this. Okay. A couple other things that you can do is you can send a file from your computer to their computer. So like an image or a document or something like that. I don't intend on using it because I use Google uh, Docs. But uh, you could definitely send a, a file to your student's. And you can also open up a program on all of them, but you do have to know you have to know the computer path to the program for this to work. I don't intend on doing that either because all the programs my students use are on on using Google Chrome, so we don't need that. 
but it's fantastic. And then um, another thing that I really like about it is I could actually take control over anybody's computer. So let's say this student right here is struggling. I could actually um, either remote view, pull this over here. Okay, remote view, and now they'll be able to see whatever, the entire class on my projector will be able to see whatever's here. Um, or I could right-click on it and say uh, remote control, and now I'm going to bring this down here so you can see the mouse. And now you can see that I'm taking control of this student's computer, and you can see it right here. It's changing with it. Okay, a little bit delay on there. So the last thing I want to show you real quick before I teach you how to set this all up is the ability to power all the machines down. I don't know how your students are, but many times my students don't shut it down correctly. They don't go down to start and hit shut down and just close the laptops, plug them in, and then they're running all night. Well, with this shutdown, all I have to do is click here. I could even install updates if your district allows you to do that. But I could just hit this power down and check out all the monitors. This is amazing stuff. Look at that. All of the monitors now went dark and they're all off. My students can no longer be on their computers. I can shut them down at the end of the night. That is fantastic. That's so cool. Alrighty, now that I've shown and tell what Veon can do for you and how awesome it is, it is actually quite a simple setup as well. So, the first thing you need to do is go to Veon.io. Once you're into the website, you just click the download button. Um, I used Windows, so mine is Windows 64 setup, so I click the download Pick the location and hit save. And I just click download. If you're using Windows Chrome, it'll download right down here on this bar. So we're going to go ahead and click that. Windows 10 will pull something up like this. Click yes. And you would click next. I agree. Click next. And then on your teacher machine, you want to make sure all three of these are checked. Then just click install. Give it a couple of minutes to install. Once it's installed, go ahead and type in Veon for your search or find out where the file saved it at and we are going to go to the Veon configurator first might pop that open again we're going to click yes and here is the Veon con here's the Veon configurator now I've already set mine up, so I'm just going to show you how I did that. Under General, you are going to click this authentication right here, and you're going to say Key File Authentication. You're going to go to Service, and you're going to click where this VNC server is, and you're going to say Built-in VNC Server. You go next. You go to the access control and I changed this to the default system user groups not sure if that has anything to do with it but I did and it seemed to work for me just fine and then find the authentication key and you're going to create a key pair once you hit create it will create um, keys for you and these are private keys that only you and your computer and your students' computers will have. Okay. Once you have your key, what you're going to do is you're going to click on the public key. Not the private key, but the public key. And you're going to say export key. And 
give it a name I just left it the same and then I hit save and it exported once you've exported that key go down to location and computers and you're going to add a location by clicking here okay and in my case I uh, called it class and then you need to add computers to your class and so I click this and so right down here I gave it a name name okay and then over here I gave it the actual computer name to find the actual computer name go down to your search type in PC or in the old days it was called my computer you're gonna right click on this PC and you're gonna say properties and you are going to get that computer name right there so on all of your student machines you need that computer name right there and that's all there is to it as long as they're on the same network as your computer you should be fine so right in there you give that the name here and whatever those numbers were okay and then click off of that and that's all I ever did um, for my students down here you could add paths from your computer that would be meant for them but again I don't plan on using that so once you have I'm gonna delete this guy so I don't want my computer otherwise I'll create an endless loop which I know will happen because I did that when I was first trying to figure out how to do this so once you've got all your computers listed in here and all of the student names the next thing you're going to do is click the apply button and click yes and that'll go through this service thing okay now you are going to take a USB drive you're going to plug it into your computer and you are going to save that export file that file that you exported right back here on the authentication keys okay where we exported it so you're going to need to know where you export it in this case I export it right in this folder okay you're going to copy that onto your student machines you are going to copy that on there and also I put the install file that file that I downloaded onto this as well and then I went to each computer and this is how I did it on there so once you plug that in and you get the install file this is what I did next so we're gonna pretend now that I'm on a student machine okay so what I'm gonna do is go to my install file again from the USB drive click yes if it tells you to click next agree click next and then the difference is and this is important on your student machines you want to click this checkbox off you don't want them to have the master okay you just want to have this driver in the service and then you're gonna say install okay once it is installed you're gonna open it up just you're gonna to go to the configurator just like we did on the master on your computer and you are going to once again change this to key file authentication go to your service change this to built-in actually go back to general if general you want this back end built-in as well and then go to access control I change that to the groups as well here and then the authentication keys now the difference is, is I'm going to import a key now Okay, on your student machines you're going to click the import and then you go and you find that you're going to find where you 
um, exported it to okay and right there I did it in my downloads you're gonna double click on that and you're gonna say open an import and then when you're done with importing their key you are going to click the apply button again and that is all you have to do on each computer after a little practice it ended up taking me about five minutes per machine um, and it was very quick so I have 20 students it took me you know 100 minutes or so um, and by the end it was probably taking me only three minutes maybe uh, per machine most of the time was booting it up this parts easy once you have your student machines configured and your teacher machine configured it's just a matter of going back to your teacher machine and opening up the new program that was installed called Veon Master and once it's opened your computers won't be here yet you're gonna go down at the bottom where it says locations and computers and you should see that import file you probably would have named it something like class or students or computers and then open this up and check all of these individually or makes it easy just to click on all of them right here at this box and your computer should now start showing up Veon is fantastic easy to use and I highly encourage it to anybody still running Windows machines that haven't gone to Chromebooks yet and please subscribe and make any comments that you need to make in the comment section and love to have some subscribers and have a great weekend stay safe out there all